Israel is the promised land for Jews who are a unique people with their own language, calendar, and religion. Tourism to Israel gets more popular with each passing year. No wonder why. There's a lot of interesting things there. The territory of such a small country is home to a distinctive culture and authenticity, a lot of historic architecture, delicious cuisine, three seas, and most importantly, there is Jerusalem, the religious center of the world. Let's head to Israel and see the way life goes there. But before we begin, make sure you've subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with future content. Israel is a state in the Middle East. It's situated on the eastern coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Israel also hosts the Dead Sea and the Red Sea. It borders Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and Egypt. Its territory is 8,020 square miles with the population of almost 9 million people. Israel was granted the status of an independent state rather recently. The Declaration of Independence was proclaimed on May 14, 1948. According to the Declaration, Israel is a Jewish state. At the same time, Israel is a multi-ethnic and democratic state where Jews and all other ethnic groups have equal rights regardless of religion. Most of the population is Jewish, about 76%, 19% are Arabs, and 5% belong to other peoples. Topographically, the territory of Israel can be divided into four zones, the coastal plain with the flat coastline of the Mediterranean Sea, the mountains and hills of Galilee, Judea, and Samaria, the Negev Desert, and the Jordan Rift Valley, featuring the Dead Sea, which is the lowest point on Earth. The official languages are Hebrew and Arabic, which has a special status. English-speaking tourists have no trouble communicating. Many Israelis speak English fluently. Israel's climate can be described as humid and Mediterranean, but the proximity of the sea in the west and the vast desert in the south and several mountain ranges create a range of zones with very different microclimates. The air temperature in Israel differs greatly, especially in winter. The mountainous regions of Jerusalem are cold and snowy. At the same time, the coastal plain features a Mediterranean climate with cool and rainy winters and long, hot summers. The highest temperature was recorded in the Valley Bet Shion, 116.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and the lowest in the Valley Bet Natofa, 8.6 degrees Fahrenheit. There's almost no precipitation in Israel from May to September. Israel is unique in many ways. For instance, the weeks here do not start on Monday, but on Sunday. The Jewish day of rest is Saturday, the holy day, Shabbat, on which all work ceases in Israel. On Shabbat, most institutions, stores, and public transport do not work. Therefore, Jews prefer to do everything before dinner on Friday and spend the Sabbath with family and loved ones. It is forbidden to do practically anything on the Sabbath. To turn on and off electrical devices, phones, and TV sets, to start the car engine, not to mention drive it, to perform any manipulations with tools, money, matches, candles, to move furniture in the house, to read and sort out business papers, and so on. It is forbidden even to go for a walk more than one kilometer outside the city or from the place where one is staying on the Sabbath. Even the Sabbath meal is prepared in advance on Friday evening. All these prohibitions serve to protect the spirit of the Sabbath and prevent people from violating their Sabbath rest. The famous saying, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath, describes these actions perfectly. But there are exceptions. If a person is in danger, one not only can but must do whatever is necessary to save that person. All prohibitions are lifted in the event of serious illness or life-threatening situations. A physician called in for emergency care is obligated to do whatever he is professionally obligated to do, regardless of the Sabbath restriction. The Talmud states, desecrate one Sabbath on his behalf so that he will observe many Sabbaths. There is an incredible cultural diversity in Israel, Jewish, Arabic, Armenian, Russian, Georgian, French, and many others. Once Israel became independent, the repatriates started massively returning to their historic homeland, including people from all the countries of the former CIS. The blend of traditions and cultures of these peoples has made Israel such an intriguing and fascinating country. Of course, the ancient heritage of Israel plays an important role in world history and culture, but modern achievements are also noteworthy. Israel has many classical and jazz musicians, avant-garde artists, sculptors, and writers. Israel is also one of the most literate countries and ranks number one in terms of circulation and sales of printed books. Since its formation, Israel has been constantly at war. As early as the day after the Declaration of Independence, it was invaded by the armies of five Arab states. 
In the course of this war, the Jews succeeded not only in defending the independence of their state, but also in greatly expanding its borders. Throughout its short history, Israel has been like a besieged fortress, surrounded by hostile neighbors, some of whom even made the physical elimination of the Jewish state their official ideology. Regular missile strikes, terrorist attacks, kidnappings, these are the daily realities in which Israelis are forced to live. Almost a quarter of the state budget is spent on defense. All citizens, including girls, are subject to military service. Israel's population is just over 9 million, surrounded by about 200 million Arabs. At first glance, such a power balance seems absolutely hopeless for Israel. However, common logic ceases to work when it comes to the Israeli army. The soldiers of Israel Defense Forces have won at all times and in all places. There have been tactical failures in the history of the Israeli army, but not a single strategic defeat. Otherwise, the state of Israel would probably cease to exist. The Israel Defense Forces, IDF, or Hebrew language acronym Zahal, consists of three branches, land, air, and navy. A fourth branch, the cyber troops, is currently under development in the IDF. The total number of soldiers is 176,000. Today, the Israeli army is considered one of the strongest and most combat-ready armies in the world. Now, let's move on from war to flowers. Israel may seem like a rocky, sandy desert unspoiled by vegetation, but this is not the case. The nature of Israel is very diverse. The country has about 2,600 plant species, of which 150 can be found only in Israel and nowhere else in the world. Oak, pomegranate, fig, olive, eucalyptus, cypress, laurel, sycamore, myrtle, pistachio, and carob are widespread. The Dead Sea. This is probably the main tourist attraction in Israel. There are plenty of people who want to swim in the miraculous water in which you can't drown. In fact, the Dead Sea is not a sea, but a drainless salt lake. The water level is dropping at a rate of about four feet per year. The Dead Sea is one of the saltiest water bodies on Earth. Its salt content reaches 33%. For example, in the Mediterranean Sea, this figure is about 4%, while in the Black Sea, it's only 2%. Due to such a high concentration of salt in the Dead Sea, there is absolutely no life. So the name justifies itself. And for the same reason, the human body in the Dead Sea never drowns. The excess of salt makes the water so dense that it simply pushes people to the surface. When swimming in the Dead Sea, you should never dive or touch your eyes with wet hands. It is possible to get a severe salt burn. It is 997 feet deep. By the way, the Dead Sea coast is the lowest land area on our planet and is 1,412 feet below sea level. For years now, Israeli medicine has been considered to be the best in the world. Patients are satisfied with both the quality of services offered and the staff of the clinics. Israel is renowned for its advanced diagnostic equipment, allowing for early detection of various pathologies. There is even such a concept as medical tourism. Year after year, more and more people visit Israel for qualified health care. The cost of treatment here is much lower than in the U.S., and the quality of medical services is much higher than in any other country in the world. Jews, what are they like? One of the most distinctive things about Jews is their mutual help especially among those who do not live in Israel. Jews always help each other in order to survive in a foreign country. All nations should seem to have this feature, but Jews have a particularly strong one. In any other country in the world, a Jew can go to a Jewish community with a problem and they will help him or her. Jews never abandon old people and children to their fate. Caring for parents, children, and relatives is in their blood. There are no orphanages or abandoned old people in Israel. Jews do not like physical labor. Of course, when they need it or when it is profitable, they will work hard physically, but their priority is certainly mental work. This is why Jews are always developing. They read a lot and are constantly learning new things, taking different courses and educating themselves. Jews are curious about everything. They are one of the most inquisitive nations on earth. Jews live their lives rationally, knowing exactly what they want out of their lives. They always have plans for the future. Most Jews know what they are going to do tomorrow, in a week, a month, a year. Jews are considered to be very greedy, but that is not so. Go into a mall somewhere in Tel Aviv, and you will see that Jews spend money without thinking twice. However, if you listen to their conversations, you will often hear the stories about how someone saved some money, bought something cheaper, negotiated a discount, and so on. So Jews are not greedy, but rather thrifty. 
Jews honor and respect their origins. Many families keep genealogical trees and most importantly, they honor the fallen. This nation is one of the most tormented and persecuted in the history of mankind. Nazi Germany alone brought this nation an incredible amount of grief and suffering and the Jews never forgot this. Just look at the many memorials and how many people go there. Jews are very sociable. They like to talk about different things. They enjoy talking much more than they do listening. A Jew cares about everything. He also has an opinion and is competent in all matters, even in those of which he hears for the first time. If a Jewish woman likes a man, she can go up to him and introduce herself first. There's nothing wrong with that. It is also normal for a woman to make money and work on her career while a man is busy with household chores and children. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, the largest city in the country and, of course, the most famous and most visited by tourists. Jerusalem is one of the oldest cities in the Middle East. It is the religious center for three confessions, Jews, Christians, and Muslims. Millions of people have been turning their thoughts to Jerusalem for thousands of years because the most important historical events related to the formation of the three great religions took place here. Jerusalem holds its main treasures in the Old City, which is not more than half a square mile in area. The main attractions of the Old City, which mostly attracts pilgrims from all over the world, are the Temple Mount, the Wailing Wall, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Among the most important holy sites in Jerusalem are also the Mount of Olives, the Garden of Gethsemane, and Mount Zion. Jerusalem is a fascinating and impressive city, so if you're planning a trip to Israel, it should be at the top of your list of must-see locations. Tel Aviv is a city located on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. Tel Aviv is home to about 450,000 people, but if we include the suburbs, which are connected by a developed transport network, its population is about 3.5 million people. Tel Aviv attracts tourists with its incredible contrasts. Modern high-rise neighborhoods are adjacent to narrow seaside streets. Luxury restaurants with inexpensive eateries, huge department stores with flea markets, beaches, and parks with high-tech business centers. Tel Aviv is the most tolerant city in Israel. It may seem surprising, but Orthodox Jews and one of the largest LGBT communities in the world coexist peacefully here. Every year, Tel Aviv hosts the Gay Pride Parade, which attracts more than 200,000 participants and is the largest LGBT community event in the Middle East. Tel Aviv is not only the social, but also the economic, commercial, and transport center of the country. The city is surrounded by wide beaches and golden sand with many bars, cafes, and restaurants that are open until morning, even in the middle of the work week. Tel Aviv is also called the youth capital of Israel for its free, relaxed atmosphere found in no other Israeli city. Tel Aviv's greatest pride is its white city. These are the neighborhoods of low-rise buildings of the 30s, protected by UNESCO. There are about 4,000 snow-white buildings of strict forms, designed by representatives of the German Bauhaus, the modernist trend in architecture and design. Haifa is a port city on the Haifa Bay of the Mediterranean Sea. It bears the title of the northern capital of the country. The city is spread out on the picturesque mountain slopes to the biblical Mount Carmel. There is an Israeli saying, Jerusalem prays, Tel Aviv plays, but Haifa works. It clearly shows the established reputation of the city as an important industrial, commercial, and scientific center of Israel. Now, Haifa is not only businesses and the port, but also a modern resort with well-developed infrastructure and a magnificent Mediterranean climate. The main attractions of the city are Mount Carmel, the Baha'i Temple and Baha'i Gardens, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, as well as the Carmelite Monastery. Israeli cuisine has been formed over the centuries and has absorbed many culinary traditions from the places where Jews lived at different times. Although Israel's national cuisine belongs to the Mediterranean, it is usually classified into several categories. Ashkenazi dishes emerged with the arrival of Jews from Poland and Hungary. Sephardic cuisine features Oriental dishes. The Arab population of the country also influenced the national cuisine, introducing dishes typical for North Africa. In Israel, traditional meals are prepared in accordance with the Kashrut laws, which are ritual rules based on the commandments of the Torah. According to these rules, there are such concepts as kosher and non-kosher food. Some foods are acceptable to eat, while others are absolutely forbidden. Kosher food includes ruminants that eat on grass, such as cows, goats, sheep, and so on. In contrast, pigs, camels, and rabbits have only one of these two attributes, so they cannot be eaten. Kosher rules also apply to poultry and eggs. 
eggs can only come from kosher birds. Also, the chefs are careful to make sure there are no blood clots in the eggs. Kosher fish must have fins, scales, and a bony skeleton. Therefore, sturgeon, eel, catfish, and other fish without scales and skeleton are considered non-kosher. Dairy and meat foods are never mixed. Even the utensils in which they are cooked are kept separate. The main dishes of Israeli cuisine are forshmak, shakshuka, hummus, falafel, halim, cholent, kreplach, and simis. Israel is a country with highly developed industry and agriculture. A significant role in the development of the economy plays a financial aid from the U.S. The total amount of aid rendered during the existence of the state was more than $100 billion. The country has developed textile, chemical, medical, and diamond industries. The state is implementing its own program of development of the industrial technological base. Moreover, priority is given to knowledge-intensive production and exports of high-tech technologies. The agricultural industry produces citrus fruits, grapes, cereals, sugar beets, peanuts, tobacco, flax, and olive trees. Poultry farming, animal husbandry, and fishing are also developed. Moreover, Israel is the international financial center. An important part of Israel's economy is tourism. The main areas of international tourism are recreation, sightseeing, pilgrimage, business, and medical tourism. The resort industry is developed along the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, and the Dead Sea. The currency unit is the Israeli shekel. According to the standard of living, Israel ranks 30th. The average salary in the country in dollars is $2,750 per month. Israel boasts more startups every year than anywhere else in the world. There are a huge number of entrepreneurs working here. Anyone from 18 to 26 years old with Jewish ancestry is eligible for a free 10-day trip to Israel to learn about the country, culture, and traditions. The program is called Taglit. This trip is entirely paid for by the Israeli government. The smallest subway in the world is in Haifa. It is only 1.1 miles long with six stations. The train passes through a mountain tunnel by cable car. The entire trip will last about 10 minutes. The subway was built in 1959. On average, this subway is used by 2,500 people a day. Life expectancy in Israel is one of the highest in the world. The average Israeli lives 82 years. In terms of the educational level of the working population, Israel is only behind the U.S. and the Netherlands. About 26% of workers here have a university degree. Israel is the world leader in the number of cats and dogs per capita. Cats amount to 2 million and dogs about a half a million. There is no central heating in Israeli homes, so in winter, all residents are insulated as much as possible, and when they go to bed, they wear socks, warm pajamas, and cover themselves with blankets with electric heating. Thank you for watching. Of course, there's still a lot we haven't covered, but there's enough information to give you a general idea of the country. Feel free to write in the comments what important and interesting things we forgot to mention. We read all comments. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon and give this video a big thumbs up.